Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Lead, Sell, Grow, the Human Experience Podcast. I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. With me, I got a man who I think is a genius, by the way. His name is Amarpreet Kalkut. He's here with me all the way from India. My man, this is so awesome to have you here. He is the CEO and founder of Humantic AI, a product that I absolutely love to use when I'm reaching out to brand new clients and potential prospects. I didn't even know stuff like this existed until a few months ago, and it made my life so much easier. So I'm Arpreet. Welcome to the show. Eric, absolutely. Pleasure being here with you. Yeah. So talk to me. When you're introducing Humantic AI, what do you say the software does? So I, what do I say software does? I think uh, these days I don't really talk a lot about what software does. You know, I, I end up talking about, you know, um, what salespeople do and uh, how it changes some of that. So I normally tell people that when salespeople are walking into meetings, uh, they want to know their customers. They want to know everything that's possible. They want to know what matters to them, what doesn't matter, how they think, what can they do to build rapport, establish trust. And that that is what Humantic does. So helping you, in very simple words, know your customers, truly know your customers. Uh, that's what Humantic does. Okay, so from a user interface, could you explain how it does that? So that's uh, that's interesting. So we have a... There's a simple answer to that or a simple um, you know, user interface, which is we have a web application, we have a Chrome extension. So web application allows you to, you know, you can go there and look up really anyone's profile. Uh, if you're walking into like a buying committee or something, you can uh, do some analysis related to the committee. The Chrome extension is more interesting because that plugs into almost every tool, every software that salespeople use, Salesforce, um, HubSpot, um, uh, outreach, sales loft, uh, you name it. LinkedIn, of course, first of all, <laughs> LinkedIn, sales navigate. So your Gmail, your uh, Outlook email, your calendar. So imagine uh, you integrate Humantic with your calendar. Uh, you're walking into a meeting. You did not get a chance to do any prospect research. 10 minutes before the meeting, you got an email saying, Eric, you're meeting Amarpreet today. Uh, here's Amarpreet's profile. And you just walk in prepared. So we integrate very deeply. And then there's then there's a little bit more, you know, what we call like omni-channel enrichment and whatnot. So we start out by saying, who's who's my buyer? Uh, everyone talks about ICP, but could we find the early adopters or the faster adopters in the ICP? That's where we start, right at the top of the funnel, helping you find the 25% who likely become 75% of your buyers. It, it does that. So... And then how do we personalize for them across cold outreach, across you know warm interactions, all the way down to closure? So we say buyer intelligence at every step of your funnel is really what Humantic delivers uh, to a sales team. Buyer intelligence at every step of the funnel. It's, it truly is a great product. So for, for you guys who are listening to me, you, know, you see the birds behind me there. Those are kind of the four personality styles that's based on DISC. And one of the things that I teach sales professionals that know your buyer, right? Know your client. Wouldn't it be great to know that if you're walking in to sell to a someone who's an owl personality or a high C personality style, knowing that they really don't care about what you did this weekend or what you like to do, and they don't want to talk to you about what they like to do and their hobbies and their kids, they want to get down to business and they need details and they need a lot of them. And I think salespeople make a ton of mistakes because they they sell to people in their own style and not exactly. in the buyer's buying style. Exactly. And what I like about your software, and I really, really do like it and so grateful that you're able to be here with me, is that with a click of a button, like literally I, I show up on LinkedIn and the, um, what's it called? The Chrome extension just starts working once you click on somebody's profile and it pops up and tells you, what your personality style is, it knows me pretty well, got nailed me down correctly, tells you what the other personality style is. Then it has these things where it says, when you send an email, do these things, don't do yeah. these things. When you're selling to them, do these things, don't do these things. I think it's amazing. It, it's funny. It's funny. So just today, you know, uh, I was on a, I ended up, landed up on a LinkedIn thread uh, you know, where someone spoke about uh, how to, you know, the usual, uh, you could say, the debate that happens. 
uh, you know, small talk, no small talk. And someone comes in and says, hey, no small talk, uh, you know, never small talk. And then someone else comes in and says, of course, small talk, you know, why not small talk? And uh, I, I went in exactly saying that. I said, folks, it's not about you or what you prefer. It's right. about your customer, you know. So put your buyer right in the middle, not not what you think, but what they think. And it wasn't possible earlier, as you said, but now that it's possible, why would you not uh, do that? You know, it's not about you. It's all about them. Yeah, this tool gives you the blueprint for who they are. So how did you come up with the idea for it? So this is uh, this is my second SaaS startup, uh, Eric. I was doing the first one, which was uh, marketing analytics, consumer insights play. So we were selling to brand marketers, helping them know their consumers. And, and as you probably know, uh, the brand marketing guys, you know, they got this thing figured out. They go really, really deep into everything. You know, the ads that we see, each word is thought through, researched. Uh, B2B, we we don't have that sophistication. You know, that's 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 a fact. So that's where uh, we, one of our product leaders, uh, his name was Sid, I remember. So around 2015, I'm talking about, he said, hey, I came across this research papers that talk about predicting personality from just people's language and words and social activity. And we said, whoa, hold on. Uh, we can predict consumer behavior. So we started there. So actually, while Humantix is very new, but the research behind it has been hardened over six, seven years, we started using it as part of the consumer research product. And then at some point, we found ourselves using it for selling and for hiring. And then we said, what if uh, we take it to the B2B world? And we'd seen one or two companies, uh, you know, do that at that point, uh, seem to be, you know, doing it successfully too. So that became the impetus for bringing it to uh, B2B. And then last year, yeah, you know, we just launched Full Throttle and it's it's been a good run so far. What was that thing you posted? I think it was you, um, where somebody typed out an email and then Humantic AI yeah. looked at the yeah. profile and changed the email automatically <laughs> to fit that other person's style better. Yeah. How does that work? So we call it, so it one-click personalization. So, I mean, it, more technically speaking, it's basically automated personalization. Um, now, what happens, Eric, is there are some people and there are some, you know, uh, there's some kinds of selling that require people to really go deep, uh, but uh, not, not that I'm a huge fan, but there's also a lot of personalized, uh, you know, selling, cold emailing, et cetera. You just shoot out the emails. Now, one of the things that we kept hearing from some of our users was saying, hey, um, my top reps, people who really, really go deep, they're going to love this. They will really put it to uh, fantastic use. But my other reps, you know, they they probably they're probably a little lazy. You know, they're not going to act on all the insights. If you tell them, hey, write something catchy and, you know, challenge oriented to Eric, that's going to catch his attention. They're probably going to give it three seconds and say, I don't know what's catchy and challenging, you know, skip it. I'm just going to do my normal. I hope you're doing well today, Eric, kind of a thing. So that's where they said, what if this can be automated? And we said, okay, uh, we know who the email is going to. Uh, we know what kind of messaging will appeal to them. What if we could just take your default message and just change it, you know, based on whether it's going to Eric or Colin or Robert Preet or whosoever it is. So I, I want to be judicious about it because one of the, so we talk a lot about humanizing sales. We, uh, and I've discussed that with some of our, you know, advisor, advisors, my coaches, uh, we don't want to make spamming easy. That's the last thing I would want to do. But, uh, you know, the idea is to make personalization really, really easy so that you can essentially do it uh, with very little effort and friction. So that's that's what you've seen. Put in one email and just put the email ID of the person it's going to. It takes, I think, six sec seconds or something, and it gives you a completely, completely different message, which is written in the style that appeals to that person. That is insane. And you can absolutely tell people's personality style. So for example, like the doves, which are your high S's, I'll give you guys a clue here. How do you know somebody is a high S and why it's important to know? Though now, not all doves 
or not all high S style personalities will use two hands when they shake your hand. Only they will do that. So if you meet somebody and you reach your hand out and they grab it with both hands and they shake and they say, hey, welcome, chances are you're dealing with a high S. So why is that important to know in a sales conversation? Because those people, they don't like change. They, they're not going to want to, they want security, stability, they're a high S, right? They don't want to get anything new you're bringing in and pitching, there, there's, there's going to be resistance. So knowing that you're going to pitch it slightly differently from a standpoint of, hey, we're all going to do it together. It's not going to be a big change. You're not even going to feel it. It's going to be amazing, right? You're going to be the hero here with your team. If you don't know that, you're going to treat them the way you treat everyone else. Chances are you're going to you know, meet with them, give them a proposal, and they'll never pick up your call again. And how many times does that happen? <laughs> happens all the time. To, all it happens. The time. It happens all the time. Now, how do you know this stuff is accurate? So, like I said, uh, you know, earlier, we've got six, seven years of you know work behind it. Um, there are multiple ways I think we can say. Now, first of all, how accurate is this? You know, so uh, I think earlier uh, you mentioned about that. So. Expect it to be 80 to 85% accurate, Eric, which means we will get it right eight times out of 10, you know, maybe a little bit more, actually, more than that. Way better than not so, knowing. <laughs> way better, you know, way better. And then, of course, we'll talk about, you know, what does it lead to? Because we, I think we have enough proof points from the results as well at this point of time. We, we work with some companies that have uh, that have been putting it to really, really uh, good use, you know, really active use, really good use. So. That's, that's number one. We're not always right. So we can be wrong one or two times out of 10 uh, for many reasons. Uh, that's one. Number two, how do we know it's accurate? Um, what all we have done? We've worked with IO psychologists to do research studies, taking humantic results, comparing them to results obtained from, you know, a traditional uh, disk assessment, you know, the multiple question, choice type questions and whatnot. We've done that. Uh, we've worked with multiple customers, as you can imagine, almost everyone who comes in first says, show me the accuracy. I want to run it on 10 people that I know, or I want to run it, you know, on, um, um, something, something, something. So we've done, done that dozens and dozens of times. Uh, we've done it where, uh, people have, you know, um, taken humantic results and then compared it to, Again, the results that they might have received, you know, from an earlier assessment, like you're a certified disc trainer. So odds are you've taken a disc assessment at some point. So that that we've done. Almost every time I would say our, our results vary between on the lowers and it, they might have hit 70% somewhere. I don't think I've ever seen less than that. We've done correlation studies. I can actually share one or two with you. Uh, we uh, you, Are you familiar with Hogan assessments? Um, no. or, odds are... Oh, okay. No, I saw that you're a you know certified predictive index. Uh, you know, um, so Hogan assessments is called the gold standard of uh, psychometric assessments. So they are the number one company in the talent assessment world, um, known as the gold standard. So one of you know one gentleman who's a Columbia professor used to be a Hogan CEO. He's written about our accuracy in Harvard Business Review. Uh, one of our um, advisors is a gentleman named Mikhail Kosinski. Uh, who's Mikhail Kosinski? He's a Stanford professor. Uh, is you, okay, this this is gonna get interesting now, uh, Eric. And I, I I saw you were at Mar a Lago. You know, I, it seems a, a few a few weeks ago. So this is gonna get interesting. Oh, so that was this Saturday, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Recently. All right. All right. So you remember 2016, Donald Trump, Cambridge Analytica, all of that? Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah, of course. All of us too, right? All of us too. Uh, and of course, Cambridge Analytica had that connection to Cambridge University. Now, Mikhail Kosinski uh, undertook the studies about um, a couple other people as well, but Kosinski was one of them. As part of his postdoctoral work at Cambridge, about could you predict personality from social media? He moved to Stanford in 2013. He was the deputy director for Cambridge Psychometric Center. He moved to Stanford in 2013. And then of course, around 2015, someone that who used to be a part of Cambridge Psychometric Centers, you know, in some ways, uh, and part of extended, uh, you know, Kosinski's extended team at some level, 
that was the whole, you know, I think that guy's name was Alex Kogan or something like that, right? That's the connection we are all aware of. So, so Kosinski is the guy who originally did that work. He sits on our science advisory board. And why does he do that? Because one of the things for him that is important is to see this technology being put to good use. And he, in Humantic, he's seen it working. So a long answer to your question, you know, from doing studies uh, to working with some of the top minds, uh, you know, in this industry to being reviewed by some of our uh, competitors in that sense, like Hogan, we, uh, you know, uh, in a way we compete with on the talent assessment side, you know, although we mostly focus on selling. So we've been through all of that. And uh, like I said, once you run a large enough sample, you'll find that uh, our claim of 80, 85% uh, does hold uh, pretty much all the time. Oh, that's awesome. So how would you sell, or what do you think Humantic AI would tell you if you were trying to sell something to a guy like Donald Trump? <laughs> so <laughs> I think, I mean, I've, I've never really tried to sell something to Donald Trump. Uh, so that's that's a separate thing. Uh, we'll have to look it up what it is. Um, at, okay, so that actually brings to an interesting point, uh, Eric, which, which uh, are you familiar with something called Dunning-Kruger effect? No. Okay. So Dunning-Kruger is very interesting and that actually answers some of the questions around accuracy. So Dunning-Kruger is essentially how we perceive ourselves and how that often can be different from the reality. It extends to how we, how we also perceive people in our surroundings, you know, our friends, our family and whatnot. So, so that's, that's what Dunning-Kruger is. So, Applied, I think, uh, you know, uh, in the uh, Donald Trump context, um, chances are that how you perceive him could be different than how I perceive, perceive him could be different than, you know, how Humantic uh, perceives him. Like at this point, I think I don't remember what Humantic says, so I'll probably end up going with my perception, which uh, which might or might not be right, you know, which uh, might or might not be right. Humantic, again, I've seen when it comes to public personalities, more public you are, odds of uh, humantic, you know, not staying as accurate go up because you don't know if Donald Trump is doing all his, you know, tweets himself or, you know, what is being posted is is being authored by him. So, uh, but not in the normal world, you know, not in the normal sales world or hiring world or anything like that. So those are a couple of things to keep in mind. But even, uh, about, okay, so you bring up a good point. Yeah. But even the CEO who, yeah. or, you know, the, the business leader that you're trying to sell to, chances yeah. are they're not 100% authentic with their posts. Oh, yeah. True. Right? They're holding back. True. True. So is Humantic just looking at their posts and then coming up with the personality style? That's a good point. So two things happen there. In fact, if you have time, you know, next, no, not next week, in two weeks, December 7th, we're actually doing a session with Professor Kosinski. You know, he's going to be on our guest because, and I think that, that you know, and knowing your background, maybe that's, you know, you should uh, make some time for that one. You'll you love that one. Okay. So there are two, yeah, there are two uh, answers to that question. The first uh, part is, let me, let me tackle it head on, is there's, uh, if we ex exaggerate it a little bit, there's always a war on between humans and algorithms. In some ways, um, exaggerating it a little bit, as, as I said. So, for example, people have been trying to game, you know, Google for a long time, uh, SEO and whatnot. And Google's job is, algorithm's job is to stay ahead of the people. So we're not yet at a stage where people are trying to game us, you know, because this is not like an established standard that everyone uses. But we take steps to take care of some of these constraints. So, for example, not all data is valued equally. Um, odds of you writing a comment are higher than you writing an article. So they will get value differently. Uh, we analyzing every piece of text to see uh, if this is really written in a natural style or if this is written in a very informational style and then that will not go as an input into our algorithms. So we take a bunch of steps to kind of stay ahead of what the constraints can be. That's, uh, you know, that's the... Uh, number one thing to keep in mind. Number two, which uh, once I asked, it, I uh, asked uh, you know Professor Kosinski this question, and he told me uh, this answer. So he and I, I forget the the exact you know terms in the psychology world, 
So basically, he he was tell, talking about that what if people are acting in a way which is different from their true self? And, and there's a term in psychology, you know, so he explained that to me, that uh, often what that does is it leads us to behave in a manner that we want to be seen as. And ultimately, uh, that becomes our reality. You know, so we, if I want to come across as someone, you know, who's... Uh, let's say, you know, very fast and quick and, you know, let's go and kill it, then that is how I, I will act. And, but that is how my behavior too will become. So it's actually not going to be misleading in that sense. And I've seen it myself, uh, how personalities change. For example, my default was not a socially very active person. Like I've not been that. But now that, uh, you know, I spend a lot of my time selling Humantic, if you'll see, I, I am super active on LinkedIn. Has that made me a just more social person, uh, you know, more open person? I would say the answer is yes. I have changed over the last three, four years more than I had changed uh, in the earlier period. So it's very interesting. Psychology is a very interesting field. Very easy for people to get confused to. So often enough, what we try to do is, you know, we try to bring them to a point where they can see that, okay, I might not agree with this thing fully, but I can see at this point that this works and hence I, I can just go ahead and use it. So it, it can be a very interesting topic. I mean, we can talk about it for hours if we get down to it. Yeah, no, absolutely. But did your buying style change? Has my buying style changed? Possible. Possible. I, I haven't really analyzed, you know, uh, try to uh, give it a deep thought. Uh, now that you asked me, I'm actually thinking, you know, has my uh, buying style evolved? It would evolve. It would evolve. See, there are some, again, traits uh, that, again, uh, research shows uh, tend to change naturally. Yeah. So till a certain point of our life, for example, again, on the average, this is not true for everyone. Till a certain point, uh, from a professional you know, uh, point of view, we actually keep becoming more disagreeable. And after a certain point, we keep becoming more agreeable. So typically what you will see is, and I'm, I'm stereotyping a little bit here, but just to make my point, odds are that a 25-year-old is not going to be as strong-minded and as critical as a 40, 45-year-old. I, I have found myself, you know, not being okay with the things that I used to do myself, you know, 10 years ago. So not paying as much attention today. But after a certain point, as we start, you know, uh, growing older, typically post our 50s, et cetera, a lot of people, they start, you know, accepting more and saying, okay, yes, this is fine. This is okay. We can go with it. So that's an age-related correlation. But similarly, we can have, you know, um, other changes at play, Till a point, it was believed that personality does not evolve. You you born with your personality. I think at this point, it's largely accepted that it evolves with time. Like Humantic, we upgrade people's profile every six months. So we don't do it every day, every month, but every six months. So if you end up seeing a change in your Humantic profile, so uh, then uh, chances are it's going to be happening because you know the info data has changed. Because your behavior, suddenly from being a you know, uh, a super quiet person, if you've gone ballistic on LinkedIn, chances are uh, that, uh, you know, uh, your profile might change a little bit or, or more than a little bit. So we try to contain those, you know, scenarios, as I said, but the personality does evolve. Yeah, 100% it evolves. And we all have, we all have all, like talking disc, we all have the ability to um, display all four personalities. It's just yes. naturally the ones that we're naturally gifted in uh, yeah. give us energy to do. And the ones that we're not take energy away. So for example, for me, I'm a big picture kind of oversight. I don't get into the details. So yeah. I can have a grand plan. I can create kind of an action plan to do it, to hit the goal. And don't tell me how to do it. Tell me what to do. I'll get it done. Let me figure it out. However, someone who's detail oriented, you got to tell them exactly how to do it step by step. Otherwise, they're going to get lost in the weeds. But that doesn't mean that I can't get into the details. I'm just going to be ready for a nap after I do. 
Right. And if you yeah. play somebody, yeah. you know, uh, like you said, in a social situation, and that's all they're doing all day long, they're not going to be as introverted as they were when they first started. So 100% agree with you there, Amarpreet. Where do you see this going in the next five, 10 years? So I think in the sales world, what, we, what we're seeing already, um, uh, there is just no way for sellers to know their buyers. So often enough, and I'll actually pause and ask you this question. So before Humantic, um, you're walking into, let us say, a meeting, you're selling something, uh, you know, you're pitching your services to someone, you know, you would want to know them, but how would you do that? Like what, what, what used to be your step one, two, three to try to know your customers? Yeah. So it's been an evolution, Amarpreet, and it's a great question. Yeah. Before I sold to everyone the same way, right? It's me. I'm happy, go lucky. Yep. I'm social. So obviously everybody must love that, right? That was yeah. a stupid belief, but that's, yeah. that's the way I did it. Then as I started getting involved and getting certified through predictive index, through DISC and understanding that different people do things differently and buy differently and observe differently. And they just tune out at certain things and tune in when you say other things, Yeah, their behaviors, the way they, the way they agreed to the meeting, the way they shook my hand, the way they sit, the way they're positioning their body are all small hints at their personality style. So if somebody wants to know yeah. about my team that's backing the project, I right. can get a sense of understanding. If somebody just, you know, you sit down, they're like, hey, you got 10 minutes. I get a sense of understanding. If somebody's asking yeah. questions about all the little details, yeah. I can I can guess at best who they are yeah. and try to position the way I sell to them. But before that, it was everybody got the same spiel. Yeah, I, I think that's that's where we all start out. And, uh, and that's exactly the point. So one is uh, getting to know them often enough. When I ask, uh, you know, this question to sales leaders, they say, uh, well, LinkedIn, LinkedIn. I mean, that's the answer. You know, how do you get to know people? LinkedIn. Now we take a look at their LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a starting point, Eric. And knowing that you, you know, you went to uh, this college, uh, you know, knowing that, uh, you know, you worked at Y company, uh, that is not going to do a lot to establish, you know, trust and repo and, you know, make you see at the end of this conversation, Amar Priest looks like a good guy that we can do business with, you know, so uh, that, no, that's that's not it. Yeah, he went and, to my school, so he's definitely going to buy from me. That's yeah, how a lot of yeah, salespeople think. Yeah, it's so yeah, stupid. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly, exactly. So so that's how to, to you know, answer your question. So that's what we speak about. So we... Uh, what we see and what, and again, I think we hear from everyone is there's no way and people, because they didn't know that there was a way to know your customers. So they've never really tried to know their customers. Mostly people, hey, we use Zoom Info. Zoom Info is company level insights, mm -hmm. uh, you know, technographics, intent data. That means this company uses this stack or is might be looking for this kind of a tool. That doesn't tell us what is going to matter, matter to Eric. So we don't know the people. So that's where we see it going, that uh, you've got something like Gong, conversational intelligence. It's largely rep intelligence, you know, sales leaders giving coaching to their reps. You've got something like a Clary, which is about uh, forecasting and revenue prediction. So you've got some of those pieces, but the piece about knowing your buyers has been missing. Uh, we believe, and I think pretty much everyone agrees, it's a critical piece. It's a critical piece, you know, those who know their buyers, they sell a lot more than those who don't know their buyers. And uh, we are bringing buyer intelligence to the table. So in 10 years, I would see it being used as much as let us say a Zoom Info is being used today. Uh, I think that's a no brainer. It, uh, that, and every customer that, uh, that we have, uh, where we face a challenge, for example, still is people uh, finally deciding to take a bite because it's just so hard to wrap their head around, you know, oh, this is even possible. Most of the people we meet, they don't even know this is possible. But our retention numbers, Eric, are absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Because once people start using it, uh, they they just love the product. So yeah, so um, that's part of the answer from a sales perspective. You know, we uh, see, and I keep telling the team that at this point, it's a no brainer. It's about how fast we can, make it, you know, uh, universally, let us say, applicable. So, but mm -hmm. we think we have the ability to head in that direction. 
uh, as long as we don't screw up, you know, as long as we do a good job, I think uh, something like that is bound to happen where there is a need to know the buyers, especially today when spamming is so easy. I can shoot a thousand emails right now and just hope that, you know, 10 of those people respond. That's uh, I, I don't think that is uh, that's a sustainable future. I don't think that is the right direction to head in. So nope. we, yeah. we, need, we need to we need to change that. Yeah. And I, I use this for, you know, I'm prior service military. So I use this. They sent Navy SEALs to get Osama bin Laden. You know what I mean? They didn't they didn't just send a whole platoon of spray and pray. It was yeah. a lot of research I love on that. the front end. You had snipers. You had I, I mean anyway, um I'm a pre yeah. so how do how much is this thing? How do people sign up? What are some payment plans? Cause I I feel like you priced it way under what it's worth. Um the value is just incredible. It's a no brainer. You could probably borrow that amount from your kids if you really needed to. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yes. But we, like I said, we want people to, uh, you know, not have to think too much about, you know, is, is this going to be worth, you know, my time? So we want them to get started. We want them to see value. So how we do it is, and we've made it very, very easy. So we offer a free trial to everyone. Anyone can come in from our website, just sign up. You know, try it. Currently, it's three weeks. Uh, we're reducing it to, I think, one week. Uh, and we'll still have options to, uh, you know, to get a longer trial. But at least, you know, one week free trial is going to stay. Uh, anyone can do it. You could be a BDR. You don't need your sales leader to buy it. Uh, our pricing starts at literally $16 per month and, uh, you know, goes uh, up to $50 a month for individuals. What's the difference between yeah. a $16 plan and a $50 plan? So the two, three key, I mean, there's a bunch of things, but two, three key differences, and like the $16 one doesn't really integrate into system. So that's largely built for, you know, someone's running a small SMB thing. Uh, you know, they're not using a CRM and a engagement tool and whatnot. So they just need the insights. As that's, they, they'll still get it within LinkedIn, you know, because they're probably using that. So then, you know, you move to the next plan, you'll get a bunch of these integrations you know, you move to the final one, that's, that's when you get that one click personalization, et cetera, you know, so where there's no work needed. Where it gets interesting is, you know, this is for the individuals, but then we have, you know, an organization plan. So where your salespeople still get all of this access, but we also build these, you know, you come and connect your Salesforce instance and your HubSpot instance and your outreach instance with Humantic and data starts flowing across all of these systems. Mm. So wherever your reps go, your demand gen team wants to do further segmentation. They want to send up, you know, uh, to S types. They want to send that email about, you know, low risk and whatnot. And to the D types, they want to send email about, you know, results, results and more results. Uh, they they can start doing that. So that's where it starts becoming. So if you're like running a hundred percent sales team at that point, you'll, it's still a no brainer of a deal. At that point, you'll probably spend hundred thousand dollars with us per year. Uh, uh, but what happens is like last week we started a trial and on seventh day of their trial, someone wrote in and said, I want a $20,000 deal, which I can hundred percent tell you would not have happened without Humantic. Wow. So just, yeah, that's, that's just how so, we price just that. So, so I can, yeah. I think I heard what you said. And I think what you're saying is once it integrates across all your systems, you're able to say, yeah. okay, this is the email it, the system can help you create an email specifically designed for the D style, the I style, the S and the C style. Yeah. Different emails yeah. that they're going to yes. read because it talks their language. Yes, and yes. you can send campaigns out specifically to these styles because the system knows who your buyers are. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, I that mean, I was cool. looking at your, at your podcast, right? You talk about the human experience and our name, Humantic AI comes from humanizing oh. AI humanizing selling. So we, we care a lot about the human experience and uh, you'll probably see a post come from me one of the days, but it really, um, I wouldn't say pisses me off, but peeps me at least a little bit. So I see a lot of, um, um, you know, a lot of wisdom, you know, being kind of spewed by, um, you know, people out there, hey, write an email subject line that's only four words or two words. Write only, you know, 30 word email or 50 word email. Never say, hope you're doing well today. Uh, never use a closing line. I mean, there's, see, it's not about rules. Not all people are the same. I mean, do you want to take out that last ounce of human, you know, from and that last ounce of soul from selling? You want to standardize everything? No. That's not how it's supposed to be, you know? Right. 
that you, you're making it so less, you know, you can't templatize everything, you know, you got to, you got to care, you know, care about the people. I mean, I would write, I hope you're doing well today to an S type personality because they you have formal. to. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. They'll Otherwise find it it'll rude if you don't. Like, exactly. Right. I mean, people don't get it. You know, they'll say, Hey, you should never, ever use that. No, that's not right. Don't use with that a D type personality. Yep. You know, I don't use that maybe even with a C type, you know, personality with I type, change that to something, something warmer, informal, casual saying, Eric, I hope you're kicking ass today. You know, uh, Eric's gonna, Eric's gonna say, oh, this is an email that deserves, you know, a few seconds of my time because that's Eric's personality. You know, Eric's a DI, let us say. So, so yeah, right. so that's, uh, yeah. No, I love it. Absolutely love <laughs> it. Um, I'm going to post the link. It is my link. I did sign up because uh, with what I do, I think uh, Humantic AI is a huge kind of compliment to our training here at the Goal Guide. And so I'll post my link in the comments section. So if you want to get your free trial, click on it, check it out. It truly is an amazing tool and uh, loved having you here today, Amarpreet. I think what you're doing is amazing. So thank you for being with us, my man. I wish you the best of luck with this company. Absolutely. It was a pleasure, Eric. Thank you for having me here today. Have a good one.